Hey folks, Doug Blake with Body Design University. Happy New Year and welcome to another weekly study. Today, I wanted to do a uh, review of the acute variables that you're going to see in chapter 21. And uh, look, chapter 21 is the OPT model. It's uh, NASM's stock and trade. It is the program model that, uh, that they have done exceptionally well in. A ton of information, I get it. And in this uh, particular study, what I really wanted to just go over with you uh, was just some of the tables that show you the acute variables for each of the phases. And so um, let's go ahead and get started. Keep in mind that, um, you know, look, at the end of the day, what's going to end up happening is you're going to go through and you're going to look at all this material and you're going to get frustrated. I know. And the questions that I see all the time in the group are, I've only got two weeks to study. I've only got this much time to study. Any tips and tricks? And the answer is no, there are no tips and tricks. I wish there were. I've been doing this for 30 years. I, I wish there were tips and tricks to figuring out how to memorize material. No, at the end of the day, memorization requires uh, time and some effort, but you got to do it properly, correctly, based on your particular learning style and those permutations of learning that help you um, from a memorization standpoint. Remember, just reading is not studying. Uh, use the different techniques that you can find in our, in our other study, uh, study videos. I like to use colors, things like that to help you to engage with the material. Don't just use a pen and pencil unless that works for you. If simply, and by the way, read it and rewrite it over and over and over. That is the tip. But tricks, mm, haven't found any tricks um, other than uh, spending more and more time. And if you only have two weeks to study, then you have to uh, use a different strategy. But on uh, this particular topic, when it comes to acute variables, a couple of things to keep in mind. And that's why I'm going over this. So I just want to make sure that um, you guys get the reality of chapter 21. The reality of chapter 21 is that there's a ton of information. However, you can be smart um, about it. And the first thing I would do is get very familiar with this table. Um, if you have the time to look through and kind of understand the uh, primary methods of progression, primary adaptations, uh, what will end up happening is it will start to make sense. Now, we see this all the time with students that comment um, on questions that are being asked. How do I memorize this? How do I do this? And there are, there's, you know, just a ton of replies from students who have tried different methods and have uh, basically realized that memorization of a table, that's going to be a challenge. That's not what tables are designed for. Tables are designed to uh, bring lots of information and put it into what apparently is um, an easy to understand um, uh, type of visual scenario. It doesn't work for everybody, uh, but that's why you have the read, write. And if you want to recite method, use colors, create your own boxes and just rewrite them over and over and over. And you'll probably memorize it. My recommendation though, is to understand, and you're going to see this, a lot of students actually figure this out and they'll even put in their responses. Don't try and memorize it because it's going to be challenging. And, and they're probably right. Uh, but try to understand what the whole point is. And that's why NASM, they did a great job in their seventh edition of going through this material, trying to explain it to you. And I'll give you a, a great example of a classic question. You might see something like, you know, uh, what is the, you know, what is the main uh, sort of general explanation of phase one, the, uh, you, you know, within the stabilization level? And the answer would be something like, uh, mastering basic movement patterns. Well, you can memorize that, but it makes more sense to actually understand that the stabilization um, phase is really designed to do certain things. If you understand that and you are a weight trainer yourself, this is what makes, it actually starts to make sense. And so, yeah, you can memorize this material. It wouldn't take you very long, but this table itself, if you can understand it, conceptually understand it, that's actually going to help you when it comes to some of the more specific information that you're going to uh, be, uh, be exposed to here when it comes to these actual tables. So look what I did for you. I just kind of threw these up 
This is the phase one. This is table 21.9. These are your acute variable tables. So phase two, phase three, four, and five. Uh, all I did was uh, cut and paste them, put them on there for you so look, you can look at them. But they're in your, obviously, they're in your textbook. So as you're reading through the textbook, you're going to hone in and focus in on each one of these particular particular tables. Um, when we get to that first one, and this is on page uh, 699, you have phase, you have this entire table, it looks like a ton of information until you go through the other tables. Okay, now, I'm not going to go through each one of these with you, it's not necessary. Uh, because your method of memorizing information is your method. Remember, I can recommend a way to memorize information, uh, but it may or may not work for you. That's why I try to do everything that I can uh, when it comes to memorizing information. I'll use coloring, I'll use, um, I'll draw, I'll, I'll read it, I'll recite it, but I'll do it over and over and do it consistently um, until, until I literally can't even stop thinking about it. So if you look at phase three, phase four, and then phase five, now watch, I'm gonna go through this again. Phase one, phase two. Now, you may not see it. You may not see it, but I'm gonna show you something that's really important. You've got five tables, and that might look to you like it's, it's untenable. There's no way I'm gonna, how can I memorize five tables? Well, the, um, the answer to that is that you're not gonna memorize five tables. What you are gonna memorize is the basic concepts of the phases themselves. And then what you do is you look at each one of these components. So you see, there's a warm up component. And by the way, the, the way you want to memorize, this is up to you. Um, I've had students tell me that they, they like to memorize sets and reps and tempo, for instance, and then everything else they can kind of figure out after that. And if that works, another way, which is, which to me makes, it's just easier, makes more sense, is to memorize the variables. So in your warmup, this is what you need to do in all, in each of these tables, okay? In each of these tables, um, that's phase five, that's at the end, you should ask yourself a question. What is similar in phase three and phase five? If there is anything similar, what's similar in phase four and phase one? Okay, so this is what I do. I look at these charts and I basically start to mull over and get an idea of, wait a minute, this looks the same. This self-myofascial release sets, this looks very, hang on a second. This looks just like this. Wait a minute, let me go through, let me go through now and check this out. Do you notice a pattern? Well, of course you do. There's a pattern because for the most part, SMR is going to be pretty much the same. In fact, the cool downs, they're going to be the same from one table to the next. Uh, the one variable that's going to be, that's going to be um, generally different on all of those is going to be what? the resistance training. So here's what you, my recommendations, one of the ways to do this in chapter 21. Let's go ahead and take a look at each one of your variables in your warmup. You're going to notice that the SMR, um, in the case of, in the case of um, phase one, there's going to be static stretching. Phases two, three, and four are going to be, um, are going to be active stretching but uh, that's gonna be about it. So take a look and I'll show you here. Let me go ahead and, and put a pen on here. Go ahead and take a look at each of these variables in each of those charts. You're gonna notice, um, and by the way, this is optional, okay? But what you're gonna notice is that in phase one and phase two and phase three and phase four and phase five, for the most part, the warm up is going to be very much the same. And then this is what a student says Well, I've only got two weeks to study. What am I going to tell them to do? Well, don't spend a whole lot of time on this, this area of that table. Why? Because they're all basically the same. And so when it comes to, when, when it comes to answering a particular question, 
your chances of getting the question correct, at least if you knew just the fundamentals of that particular variable, is going to be much higher. Well, what about the next two? And by the way, you could break this into just the activation or just the skill development. But generally, these guys are going to be very similar. So you can see the rep, the sets, and the reps. Okay. Okay, so activation, which is core and balance, and then the skill development plyometric. By the way, you'll notice that they're optional in some of these, in some of these phases. So this is what I do. And this is where I, what, what I said earlier is that I'll have students will literally cut things. Look, they don't care. The textbook is just, they'll cut it out and they'll literally cut out that one section and put them all on the same sheet, the way I'm kind of way I'm doing it for you here. And that makes it a little bit more accessible academically, psychologically, however you want to say it. It makes the material more accessible. There's a cohesion to it now when you're looking at five disparate tables. You can bring them all together. And now I can basically ask you in phase four, right? If in phase four, I asked you, what is the self myofascial release component look like? Well, if you've already memorized one, it'll be a good, good chance that you'll get it right if you said uh, one to two sets or three sets, something like that, you'd be okay. Because phase four is exactly the same for the most part, other than the fact, and like I told you, there is the, um, there's the active stretching component. This is phase one is static, phases two, three, and four. And then of course, in phase five, which is power, uh, what type of stretching would you do? Dynamic. Okay. So that's what you would write down. It wouldn't take you very long to memorize that. Well, what about the resistance training? So here it is, folks. And this is what I always recommend in chapter 21. If you're going to spend the time, if you don't have a lot of time to study and you do need to spend time in one area, that's the one that is the area that you're going to spend the time in. Now, Here's something else that I'm constantly, how do I know? Well, if you read through the textbook and you yourself do some exercise or you train, what do we normally say? Endurance training is going to be higher repetitions. And then that's going to give you an idea of your sets, right? Your repetitions, right? Um, you know, where did I pull this one from? That's not power training, is it? So it's not phase five. So if you ever get a question that says in uh, phase five, blah, 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 you should automatically, if you've been kind of studying this way, you would automatically know you're not dealing with repetition ranges, right? Necessarily um, in a high, in the high rep range, necessarily. I'm not saying you're not going to, uh, but generally what you're going to see um, you know, is, is this type of scenario. So if I move all the way over, uh, tempo is slow. Again, if you look at all of your, let me go back up here for a second and show you real quick. Um, and, and again, I'm showing this to you so you get the idea. This is phase one resistance. What do you see, all right? That's the one that I used. So there are your variables. Let's go to uh, phase two. What's the difference? One to three reps, two to, two to four sets, sets, I mean. So you get the idea that if I'm going to, if I'm going to notice any discrepancies between phase two and phase one, it's going to be here more than likely. This is where you're going to see most of the differences. Okay. So I hope that, I hope that makes sense. Now you're in phase three. What do you notice? Well, it's not going to be too difficult to Get the idea muscular development training is hypertrophy training, right? And so, you know, if you look over here, 12 to 20 reps is allowed. If additional muscular endurance is desired, that makes sense. I hope the only things that you really need to keep an eye on in, in these cases would be something like the rest interval. But again, the idea is that if you, if you exercise and you work out, this will start to actually make a little bit more sense. And then when you get the question, a question um, about the rest intervals for endurance training versus power training, um, you would have already 
spent more than enough time. So maximal strength training, important variable here. Notice this is where you're going to see the greatest discrepancy, greatest differences, right? Phase five power. Well, look, again, I, I hope this is making sense. The idea is that, let me get this back in here for you. Okay. The resistance training is going to be the majority of your variations from, uh, from table to table. So if you are really crushed for time, chapter 21 is a critical chapter. What in chapter 21 do you really need to know? Um, definitely, uh, you need to know the, um, the acute variables, obviously, and um, a lot of other. Look, chapter 21 is a, is a very important chapter, but let me get back to this last one. When you get to this bottom area, what you're going to notice is that these guys are almost exactly the same. Okay, so client's choice is always going to be acute variables or subjects. So client choice is always easy. You don't even have to memorize that. And generally down here in the cool down, they're all going to be almost exactly the same. If there are any differences, um, they're going to be so minor. It's just not even, not even worth uh, mentioning. So what did we just do? Uh, we essentially got, we go ahead and stop the share on here. You know, essentially, what did you do? You took all this information that appeared to be totally overwhelming um, and you started to pick and choose and realize that, well, when all is said and done, if I was to overlay all five on top of each other, I'll, more than half of the material would all be the same from one phase to another. So it's not that the OPT model is, is difficult. It's really not. It actually makes a lot of sense from a progressive standpoint. Uh, what you have to make sure you're doing is... Uh, going beyond reading it. Reading is not studying. Reading is the beginning of studying. Listening is the beginning of studying. Go to any of our uh, Body Design University um, study, uh, chapter level study, or general study guides, and you're going to get the same thing. We're going to continue, continue over and over to tell you the same thing, which is that you have to read and listen, for instance, to begin the process of studying. But at the end of the day, look, you know, I've got orange and purple. I'll write things with color. I'll change the size of the font. I'll do whatever I have to do to memorize the material. And I'm going to take some tests. I'm going to look at the questions and I'm going to see what I did wrong on those questions. Go back to the material. You get answers wrong on a test because you don't know the material. I hate to tell you this. You get questions wrong on a quiz and a test, not because they're tricky questions. Look, I'm a teacher. I'm just telling you, they're not tricky questions. It's just you have not learned effectively or memorized effectively the material. And it's probably because of your studying, okay? And so the recommendation is that when you're going through this material, um, you do need to not just spoke to a student recently who uh, told me she had... Uh, you know, did poorly on the NASM uh, exam until she started to learn how to study correctly. And what she did was she used Plato. How's that for a way to study? And now she memorizes things better because she's using an, uh, using material that's engaging and um, because everyone's learning style is different. So read it, rewrite it, say it out loud, listen to the, there's so many uh, available study resources. I really want to help you as we move into 2022 here to, um, to help y'all to pass this exam on the first shot. Whether you use the information and the material in the real world when you're training people is totally on you, but you gotta pass the test. So I hope this was helpful um, in chapter 21 and in the subsequent, uh, subsequent weekly, uh, weekly study sessions that we do, I'm gonna go, I'm gonna spend a little bit more time in chapter 21, please, if you have any questions on what I just went over with this weekly study or anything else, post it, post it to the group for sure. Um, and just let, uh, just let me know. And I can actually uh, spend time specifically on a particular question that you may have. Remember, Corey and I do a Q&A 
every Wednesday at 2 p.m. Eastern Standard Time. You can uh, click on the link. You'll find it here in the group. And uh, any questions you have, please let us know. Because again, the goal is to help you to pass this exam on the first shot. Okay. Have a great weekend. And we'll see you next week.